Hey, what's up YouTube? Joel Wanasek here with Unstoppable Recording Machine, and today I'm gonna show you how to use stereo widening to take your metal rhythm guitars and add width to them. I mean, everybody loves wider mixes, right? So there's a couple different things to think about when adding width. So I like to think about it like this. The wider we go, the more the element that we're widening gets detached from the mix. Also, the wider we go with something, the more um, it's not gonna be mono compatible unless you're using a plugin that is fully mono compatible. And then another thing to realize is that width is also usually frequency dependent, meaning the higher the frequency goes, the easier it is to hear the width. So if you have, for example, um, something that's got a lot of high frequency and is rather thin, it's gonna sound wider than something that's thick. So those are the really important considerations when widening something. Now, basically, um, the way to widen a guitar or a keyboard or anything is taking the stereo channel. So you got a left and right guitar here, uh, as you can see, and then we've got them panned um, fully right and fully left. And what you want to do is you want to take the, um, the instrument and to do this manually, you're going to copy it, paste it. You're going to switch the panning. So meaning the left guitar will go to the left and the right speaker. So it sums mono, but then you're going to adjust the phase. And you can do that simply by time sliding the instrument. Um, and that's what it is. It's like putting out of phase material in the opposite speaker of the source. The source copied into the other speaker, that the opposite one, out of phase with itself. And that creates the illusion of width. Okay, so let's first look at it in plugins. Then I'm going to show you how to use uh, how to do it manually. And then after that, um, I'm going to show you how to use EQ to do this really powerfully. Okay, so let's listen to this riff that we've got right here in this metal song. So let's say we want to get this a little bit wider. So there's a couple different plugins we can use. I mean, there's a lot, but I'm just going to keep it simple for this. I'm just going to use um, Waves S1, S1 Imager right now. And this is simple because you have a width control right here. So I'm going to default this back to one. Let's just listen to it in solo and hear what it does. <laughs> I was just playing around with the gain structure a little bit, but I've got it so wide, it, it doesn't really seem to matter. Okay, so um, as it gets wider, you might notice that it gets a little bit weird and a little bit phasey once we really start pushing it out. So again, um, a lot of people use these plugins subtly, um, for example, so maybe like a point two here. Um, let's hear it. to add a little bit of width, because if you go crazy, it gets really weird and phasey. Okay, so let's hear it in a mix now. I'm gonna go back to uh, the original gain amount, and, or, or sorry, width amount, and let's have a listen. So I've got it pushed out on this plugin 1.3. Let's bypass it and just compare. It adds a nice little bit of width. Now I'm gonna jack it up pretty aggressively and just listen to several things. First off, how the guitars start detaching from the rest of the mix and they start losing their gel, meaning the mix isn't gelling together, the pieces aren't going together and locking like a puzzle. It, it just feels disconnected, that's a good way to say it. And this is a, a big giveaway here um, when we're doing like nail the mixes and things like that. Sometimes I hear people widening so much that their stereo instruments are separated so radically from their center, it sounds like they're floating in space. And you hear that quite often. So it's really easy to abuse wideners and you need to be careful. So let's listen to that and then demonstrate it. I was just trying to compensate a little bit here with the gain as I'm increasing the width because it's getting louder. But you can hear like this, for example, gives me a headache. And I'll actually tell you a funny story 
Um, there was a while ago, a couple years ago, I was mixing for the guy who runs a particular record label and I did a lot of mixing for him. And he was like, dude, you know, I was listening to some mixes of yours in headphones. And it's really weird because I'm listening to the stuff that I'm referencing. I turn it up really loud in my headphones and it's like the guitars are right in my face. And when I listen to yours, it feels like they reach around and go back behind my head. And it kind of trips me out and gives me a headache. What are you doing? And I'm like, well, I don't know. And I sat down and I thought about it and I played with some plugins and I realized I had the stereo widener jacked. So I took off the stereo widener and I sent it back to him. He's like, oh, I don't know what you changed, but it's so much better now. So it's really easy to do that. And ever since then, I kind of really stopped doing heavy stereo widening on my mixes. So it's easy to do that. Like I said, it's easy to really disconnect um, your stereo instruments, especially guitars, because it's so cool to have everything sound so wide, right? Uh, but um, as you know, uh, there's a trade-off here again. So let's listen to it. It gives me a headache. That's what I wanted to say. I get a headache when I listen to this and he got a headache too. So let's go back and forth. So that's how easy it is to do in something like Waves S1. And I never really went more than like 0.15 to 0.3 uh, in my most extreme mixes. Now, um, I'll, I'll use another plug in here that I've got Sidewinder. This one is more mono, is mono compatible. And he's got several different modes in here. Let me just demonstrate. <laughs> They all sound a little bit different. So if we bring the guitars in here, um, a, a plugin like this is nice and mono compatible. So you can widen it up, and then when you go to mono, it'll collapse better than uh, you know something like S1 would. All right, so you can see it's really easy to add width to your guitars when you're mixing using a plugin. Now, if you wanna do this the mono way and you wanna get crazy with it, or sorry, not the mono, the manual way, and you wanna get crazy with it, here's how you do it. So you take your left and right source, and we're gonna just duplicate these tracks. Now, I'm gonna color code this to make this a little bit easier to understand here, and just go left and right. now. What you have to do is you have to um, alternate. So I have the left guitar here on the left channel in both times because I've just duplicated it. You either need to switch panning on it. So put the left and the right and the right and the left, or you can switch tracks. So you could go like this and swap out the tracks. So the left is panned to the left or the right and the right is then panned to the left. So either way, however you want to do it is fine. Whatever works most for your workflow right now, I'm just going to switch the panning on this despite how they're labeled. And let's do that. Now you have to adjust the phase relationship here. So if we solo this, sounds pretty mono. We have to take this and start sliding. So I'm just slip editing by holding control alt and clicking in Cubase and you can move the audio within the region, which is pretty cool. So just do it by ear, whatever sounds good. I'm liking this today. You can see I shifted it back pretty far, uh, but again, Haas effect within 30 milliseconds, it's going to sound like part of the original source. So, you know, I'm, I'm pushing it here, but it's definitely not ridiculous. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead over to the mixer here. I'm going to link these up. And what we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to have a little bit of fun with this. So I'm going to close this out. And let's come down here to the fader. As we listen, we bring the fader up, you're gonna hear the out of phase material come up and um, it's gonna get wider. Let's hear it in the mix now. Now I'm gonna show you a cool trick for the super nerds out there. Um, you can introduce EQ. So for example, let's say we wanna come in, and again, I have these channels linked, so whatever I'm EQing on one of them, I'm EQing on the other, as you can see. So um, if we wanted to take some top end and bring up the top end and make the high end of this guitar sound a lot wider without uh, making the rest of it, so let's just turn up 5K by you know a ridiculous amount.
So that gets pretty bright, but when we bring it down, oh, sorry, let me get the source here. When we bring it down in volume, you're gonna notice the top end gets a little bit wider and we're widening more of the top because we've emphasized it with EQ. Now you can do the same thing here with the bottom end as well, or the mid range, say we wanna go 1K. Maybe we want to do the lower mids. So when we do that, we're getting a little bit more thickness in the width. Now, again, the higher the frequency is, the easier it is to hear the width and the more defined it's going to be. Um, either way, um, it's a cool mixing trick. It's powerful. You can use it to do a lot of different things in your mixes. That is how to set up a scenario uh, with your metal rhythm guitars or any instrument that's stereo for, um, and basically widen it and again, make it cool in the mix. Now, like I said, there are some trade-offs uh, just to review the wider it gets, the more disconnected it's gonna get, the more phasey it's gonna get. And um, you know, it's really, really important to keep that in mind. So don't overdo it, but you can definitely uh, they see that it can be a powerful trick for the right mix. So if you enjoyed this type of video, please click subscribe uh, because we have so many great mixing videos here on our channel and audio production videos, as well as quick like and leave a comment. Let me know what you're using stereo widening on or if you have any favorite widening plugins that you like or what else you'd like to see us make videos on. Thank you so much for watching and I'm Joel Wanasek with Unstoppable Recording Machine.